Hey everybody, this is Big Bear, Tony Sandoval, BBE Tech, uh, Apiary Services, professional handyman. Today, what I kind of wanted to bring to you is uh, talk a little bit about organic beekeeping. Now there's a lot of ways we can look at using the word organic. Uh, probably what I like to refer to as the most accurate way when I talk about it is the scientific or biological term which is referring to mimicking or imitating replicating what another natural creature does you know on, on their own for example we talk about beekeeping we're going to be organic beekeepers we want to try to emulate what bees would do naturally versus in a managed hive system uh, or at least we want to emulate the things they do successfully what happens in a successful natural or feral colony, wild colony, and we duplicate that. We don't want to duplicate things that aren't working in, a, in the, the natural uh, situations. Because feral colonies, uh, wild colonies, are also the so-called uh, uh, canary in the coal mine. So they're usually the first to get hit, to take the big, the big hurt when, when new diseases or pests come along and they're not prepared. But over time, as we see them diminish because they're faced with a new threat, and over time they build back up, and they diminish, and they build back up, we're able to, after a while, kind of get to see what they've been doing naturally that brought them to overcome the problems. And we can study those successful adaptations and try to emulate those in our organically managed colonies. So we're not talking about organic as in like we're getting organic honey as a plot point to sell, you know, a new scheme or something to sell honey or, or something like that. We're talking about how we manage our hives in a way that's based on successful practices of, of feral or wild honeybee colonies. So today we really want to focus on how do we get started with organic beekeeping. It, it's, it's, it's a lot bigger process than most people realize. It doesn't just start with the wooden box and the bees. We start with the land. We start where we're going to set everything up at. We want to make sure that we've got the best start possible because when we talk about successful feral colonies again, uh, wild honeybee colonies, we want to look where are they successful at. I don't certainly don't want to take them down into the middle of a parking lot, the cement everywhere, cement and steel, and expect them to survive there. Bees don't normally survive in the middle of something like that. Where they do work the best at is in areas where there's a lot of things flowering, a lot of blooming plants, uh, be it on blooming trees, flowering trees, on, on, on uh, ornamental flowers from somebody's you know flower garden, somebody has a, a herbal garden or a vegetable gardens, uh, farms. Those are the places they do best because they have constant and consistent sources of forage. And so when we set up a good organic colony, we want to set up in a place that's going to provide those things without having to have me or whoever bring it in and, and make it up as you go. We want it to already be there as much as possible or have enough there and then add to it as we go along. So location is really going to be one of the first things we look at we talk about organic beekeeping. Alright, one of the things that we really want to first consider hive-wise, actually the hive equipment-wise, we talked about you know the good place that's going to have lots of forage, but when we talk about putting the hives up, we're talking about a place placement of the hive height off the ground. Height off the ground has a lot to do with our, our success of our colonies because the ground produces moisture uh, through evaporation, through condensation. Moisture comes up off the ground, especially in the summer and the spring. It raises up off the ground. And if you don't have it high enough off the ground, the bottom boards of your hives will soak up all that moisture. And then it just releases all that extra moisture into the hive. Whereas if you bring a hive up just enough off the ground, a lot of that that rises off the ground will dissipate out from underneath and spread away. And therefore you're making the bees job easier. You're reducing a certain amount of work uh, and stress on the colony just by keeping it off the ground enough to disperse that ground moisture. So we saw, see a lot of conventional beekeepers who will have their hives on pallets, sometimes directly on the ground, 
Then we see other people that will have them maybe on a cement block about eight inches off the ground or on a uh, using planks of board, two by eights uh, are common, uh, double blocks high. Now we talk about what's the standards for organic. Usually you're going to see the standard be anywhere from eight to sixteen inches. So for example I use, I refer a lot to the CNG program which is Certified Naturally Grown. They have a booklet out there that gives guidelines for certification for organic apiaries. And remember that's organic management not getting to the result of organic honey. Organic management, CNG, Certified Naturally Grown, they have a nice outlet book, booklet outlay that gives you that kind of information and they also recommend somewhere between 8 and 16 inches off the ground. Again, that's so we can get that ground moisture to disperse before it builds up inside the colony. A lot of moisture problems lead to extra stress. It lures other pest roaches and, and a lot of an, pest uh, uh, insects that breed in higher moisture areas. Bees prefer, naturally prefer, a dry or an arid nest location. They don't want a lot of humidity, so you very, very rarely see honeybees nest in or on the ground. You'll see them just above the ground a lot of times, underneath a low-laying deck or porch, but very rarely, if ever, we see them in the ground. Honeybees, just the moisture, too much humidity for what their nest needs. Uh, so 8 to 16 inches, we're looking at putting them up on blocks or uh, uh, risers, something like that. So when you're out here and you're looking, you want to find a place you can put blocks or razors in a nice unobstructed area as level as possible and the more level it is the more simple you can keep it. So for example, blocks are really simple. Blocks are really easy. You can just stack them up and go and if you got a mostly level area you're done pretty much. You might have to do a little bit of digging into the ground but you know it's not a whole lot of work. But say in an area like where I'm standing now, the, the, the ground slopes like this. And so we're going to need to put a little more work into it. Now we can use our back and do a lot of digging to level these things out. Or we can instead go with a different way, which is kind of frame up a board base and just kind of create a little stand. You just put your, 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 your corners in, on, on nice high uh, ends or stakes. You bring them up off the ground. It's kind of like putting up a fence. So that way, once you've got them all up there, you can make sure all your, your boards are all nice and level towards the top at the height you want them off the ground. And then you're not having to do a lot of extra digging. You're just pounding these boards or stakes into the ground and then you're framing, building the frame around that and you set your hives around that. So work with the ground around you. Don't work extra hard at it. You don't have to do that, but take into mind you can adapt just about any ground to meet your height requirements, your, your, your hive uh, placement requirements with just a little bit of forethought. So you come out in a place like this and you look and say, how level is it? How, what, will it be easier for me to work this place just by setting blocks down? Will I need to work a little more and dig? Can we avoid that by, you know, the big thing is you want to get it pretty much level. You want to get them up off the ground level if you don't get them level then all the rain coming in and all that will end up sending water to the inside the back of the hive getting that board bottom wet again moisture inside so level and, and off the ground so that's a little bit about how we get started with the layout of an organic apiary the next time we talk we're going to talk and start talking about types of hives we're going to talk about a variety of hives that can be used and how well they can be used as organic hives so we'll get a, get a good look at a, about using all kinds of woodwork and, and, and hive types and, and get going. Till next time, this is Big Bear at BBE Tech. See you then.